It's Friday night, Atlanta. Time to rise up tonight with Kelly Price and Harry Douglas. Presented by AT&T. Welcome into another edition of Rise Up Tonight. I'm Kelly Price, joined as always by former Falcons wide receiver Harry Douglas. How we doing, Harry? Kelly, I'm doing well. You want to know why I'm doing well, though? We have surpassed summer, and we are into fall, my favorite season of the year. So I'm doing great. And it's certainly feeling like it outside, and we've got to be as positive when we can here. The biggest thing we have to remember with the Atlanta Falcons this fall, this team is a work in progress. So to see progress on Sunday was encouraging, I think, for a lot of Falcons fans out there. Someone who really showed growth from week one to week two, the unicorn himself, Mr. Kyle Pitts, who had the most receiving yards of any Falcons Sunday in Tampa. Harry, what did you see from number eight in how can his role possibly expand, expand even more this week? Well, I like what I've seen from his progression from week one to week two. He looked way more comfortable out there on the football field. Five receptions, 73 yards, actually looked like the number one guy that they drafted. And there's no question, Kyle Pitts, he's going he's gonna to take over this lead. It's about him getting comfortable week in and week out. Now, I think game three against the New York Giants, I think he's going to step it up even more and make more plays for this Atlanta Falcons football team. And reps is a big part of it too, right? Similarly, this entire team, I think, proved to itself last week that they can fight. We're not into moral victories, of course, but having been in those kinds of situations as a player, Harry, how much does that fight mean as far as building confidence and maybe momentum going forward? I think it means a lot. You got to remember this Tampa Bay Bucks football team won the Super Bowl last year. They returned 11 starters on offense, returned 11 starters on defense. And you look at this football game, Atlanta Falcons actually had an opportunity to go up and win this football game. It was 28 to 25 in the, in the fourth quarter and they had a 31 situation. If they convert there and go down and score, it's a different ball game. So uh, you take that going into, I say, week three with, with, with high hopes that you can get better and win this next football game. And what better way to find your footing than on some easier terrain? Facing the Eagles and Bucks right off the bat was always going to be a tall task, but now the Falcons look ahead to a schedule against three teams that own a combined record of 1-5 right now. If there's any time to pick up some dubs and even more confidence, it's got to be right here, right, Harry? You're 100% right, Kelly, and you really want to focus on the next game, and that's the New York Giants, but when you look ahead, they have the Giants, they have the Washington football team, they have the Jets, and they have the Miami Dolphins. This team could actually go 4-2 um, within their first six games and still be in the hunt to, 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 to make some runs at the, uh, at the uh, playoffs this year. See how it goes. What well, was the first road trip of the regular season and we saw some fits that were flying high? Let's review in this week's Falcons Fits. First up, last time we featured Jalen Hawkins, Harry had some things to say about stepping up the fit game. No more t-shirt this time for the young safety. We've got some bandana vibes on the collared shirt, clean black and white Nikes. There's just something oh so classic about that Braves ball cap too, Harry. Yes, it is, Kelly. Shout out to the Braves who are looking to make this playoff push. But somebody reached the young man. Somebody told him you can't be coming to the stadium in a t-shirt. So <laughs> shout out to them veterans for looking out for the youngster. <laughs> Second, Jacob Tuioti Mariner bringing some heat with his suit. I love a statement suit, and this color is just mwah. Topping it off with some fresh white sneakers, the whipped cream on top of this fit. I do wish we could see a front view of this picture, though, because a little ice up top will just take this from an A grade to an A plus, Harry. Ooh, Kelly. You can't hide that money. I like this. I like everything about this. This is sharp. Jacob to Odie Merida, you showed up. You dressed to impress. Now go out there and ball out, young man. I like the way you showing up to work in the suit. Now for some special outfits on special teams. Just like you can rely on him when you need three points, you can rely on Young Waku to deliver in the fashion department as well. I think he wore this outfit last season, but you know what? It doesn't matter because it's fresh, it's clean, it's classic, and it never goes out of style for a business trip. Cuckoo! Keep, people keep asking me who. I say cuckoo! <laughs> cuckoo! I don't care if you wear this suit again that you, and you wore it last year. Listen. Message to young, young way cool. When I was a youngster, my first two years in the league, I only had like three suits. I had them things in rotation. <laughs> I used to just change the shirt. Keep doing what you do. Save that money, my brother. Save that money. And it's classic, so it doesn't go out of style. Last but not least, Dante Fowler stepped up his game in the fashion department as well this week. He also stepped it up on the field a little bit. I'm not big on the cargo pants personally, but this shirt did not come to play. I like how Fowler topped it all off with some nice accessories, some Hata Blackers wrist candy, even a little blingy ring on his hand. Hey, somebody told me Dante Fowler is from Florida. Well, you showed up in Florida. You went back to your roots. You got a sack fumble and everything. You dressed to impress. You bringing out the colors. You got the accessories. Do your thing, Dante Fowler. We need another sack and a strip fumble out of you this week, though. I'm just here to let you know. <laughs> Florida man doing his thing down there. 
Well, Deion Sanders, Michael Vick, Warwick Dunn, Roddy White, larger than life legends who may be some of your favorite Falcons players. Well, this week we asked the current Falcons who's your favorite athlete in this week's question of the week. Marshall Falk, um, he's one of the reasons why I wear 28. Um, uh, I was remember uh, when I was little watching a clip of him playing against the Browns. He got the ball, he ran, he was running, and a guy was like coming to tap him. And he just stopped on a dime without looking at him, and he just flew past. And that memory is just always in my head for some reason. Cristiano Ronaldo, because I grew up playing soccer and I, you know, watched soccer and stuff, so definitely him. First, my granddad, he played, uh, his name was Roy Hilton, he actually played with the Falcons here. Uh, I played 11 years in the in the NFL, so, um, you know, that's clearly my hero and it's definitely influenced my decision to be, be here today. My favorite athlete probably of all time would be Usain Bolt. Um, I mean, I ran track, obviously, um, growing up and stuff like that, but then just kind of his dominance in the sport um, was kind of unparalleled um, to anything that we've really seen before, especially in track and field. Uh, Tiger Woods. The return to glory. I love to play golf. I'm a big golfer, and so uh, he's always been somebody that, that I've enjoyed watching, and he's definitely a guy that, uh, that has inspired me to try to be the best version of myself on the, on the field. That is really cool that Brandon Copeland's grandpa wore red and black and now he does. My favorite athlete, Serena Williams. I grew up playing tennis. I idolize her style, her dominance, her attitude. What about you, Harry? I'll say for me, Kelly, it's going to be my brother. My brother, Tony Douglas, man, he, he played basketball at Florida State, went to the New York Knicks, got drafted in the first round. I am his biggest fan. Uh, we are best friends. Uh, he's overseas right now, so I watch his games on the link because I'm not able to go to him. But my brother's always been my favorite athlete. Oh, a little brotherly love. We love to see it. Well, still to come here on Rise Up tonight, we go in the nest with hip-hop duo Earth Gang. Plus, Mike Davis is making an impact on and off the field here in Atlanta, where he actually grew up. More on that coming your way next on Rise Up Tonight. Rise Up Tonight is presented by AT&T and brought to you by Georgia Lottery. Today could be the day. By Home Depot, how doers get more done. By Mercedes-Benz, the best of nothing. And by Truist, committed to a better future. What's up, ATL? This is Ted Craig. Let's rejoin my favorite co-hosts, Kelly and Harry, for more Rise Up tonight on your home for Falcons football, Fox 5 Atlanta. Part of the reason Mike Davis decided to come to Atlanta in free agency this offseason is that he wanted to make a difference in his hometown. Let's take a look at one way he gave back this summer as we Rise Up for Atlanta, brought to you by Truist. Davis played for legendary Stevenson High School coach Ron Gartrell, and the coach's influence on the seven-year pro was evident when he hosted a football camp for kids at Douglas High School. Over 200 young athletes attended the camp and got to get up close and personal with the Falcons running back. He told us when he sees those kids smiling, he knows his job is done. This is one of the things, you know, I wanted to, to show kids, you know, in this area that, you know, I came from here, I grew up here. Um, all the things you see, I've seen it as well. And, you know, if I, I made it, you know, you can make it too. You know, there's always opportunities out here for everybody. Now let's head up north to Tacoa, where the Stevens County Indians are undefeated so far in 2021. And this week, head coach Wesley Tankersley was named the Atlanta Falcons Coach of the Week, presented by the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Coach Tankersley has provided meals to coaches and players, offering rides to and from school, college visits, and even doctor visits, push players to volunteer, and most of all, he's been leading during a tough time for any community. Now they're seeing on-field results of his work to grow these young men off the field. The Indians are 5-0, already matching their win total from a season ago when they finished 5-3. Coach Tankersley says his group is resilient, winning a few of their games in the final quarter so far, including last week's game at rival Habersham, San Habersham Central. For me, it just gives me, um, you know, more um, fire, I guess you could say, or it just gives me, you know, just more inspiration uh, to, to keep working hard and keep trying to, to do the right things as a coach. You know, there's a lot of negativity out there sometimes in the coaching world and in the world in general. And sometimes you need a, you know, sometimes you get, need a good reminder that, you know, you are doing some things right. 
And be sure to tune in next Friday night for coverage of our High Five Sports Game of the Week. Hughes at Westlake. Talent, talent, and more talent in this one, plus a chippy rivalry. This one's going to be special. Westlake's head coach Bobby May took the Lions to the state finals in only his second season, losing to Lee County 35-14. Meanwhile, Hughes finished 11-2 after making it to the state quarterfinals. A Week 5 loss to Westlake in 2020 left a nasty taste in their mouths, so Coach Daniel Boone-Williams will have their Panthers ready to go. That's coming your way next Friday night on the best high school football coverage around right here on Fox 5. Silicon Cup come now on Rise Up Tonight. Our Falcons insider Tori McElhaney says the devil is in the details for the Falcons this week. She'll explain later in the show. And coming up next, we're going to nest with Earth Gang. Yeah, I said it right. Earth Gang. That's coming your way soon. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight, and it's time to hop into the nest with Kelly, Harry, and tonight's influencer, brought to you by Mercedes-Benz. Today in the nest, we have with us a hip-hop duo, Earth Gang. We know there's some Falcons fans from the South Side. Actually, you're on the North Side, you said, but uh, South Side Maze High graduates. Um, what are your thoughts on the Falcons so far this season? I know it's been a kind of tough 0-2 start here. Oh, well, I, I want to say shout out to the southwest side of Atlanta, you know, main side of the west side of Swats, you know, West End, Camden Road. Um, my thoughts. Wow. Where, where can I start? I think the first thing is. This is hard. This is hard. Yeah, like, I mean, we, we deserve, the city deserves a winning franchise and a winning organization, you know. We really do. It's the entertainment mecca of the country. And I think, you know, whether, whether it comes from the top of the organization, the quarterback, the defense, the line, you know, we, we all just, we, we're ready, you know what I'm saying, to take that next step. Um, you know, I, I saw some improvement from the first week to the second week. I, I saw some fight, and I think that is the most important thing of any football team, you know, just to know that at the end of the day, you're really going to put it all on the line and not, you know, just like give up. You know, I saw Matt Ryan scrambling. Now, when, when both of you guys, you look at this Atlanta Falcons football team, who was the one player on this team, fellas? That is must see TV. Who y'all think? I, 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 I can't have the same. You can't have the same person now. Oh, Chris Cordell Patterson. It's easy for me. He, he's okay. on my league. I've drafted him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like he's really doing his thing. He's very creative. Every time he touches the ball, he has the ability to take it to the house. You know, I Good love pick. you know Ridley and I love Kyle Pitts. I was, say, I was gonna say Calvin Ridley. You gotta give it up. Those, those, man. those guys are very very amazing. But Cordell Patterson, he just has that factor where like put the ball in his hands. He's gonna make some shape, you know. That's dope. Yeah. Who are some of your favorite Falcons players throughout the years or memories? Ever you know, of history? The oh man. <laughs> I've been a Falcons fan since 1998 that I can remember. So I was in like second or third grade. I remember that from, I remember that from the Super Bowl because it was like it was. I thought that's what I was gonna grow up in. But <laughs> honestly, I I I, whew, I mean I, I gotta say Michael Vick first. I just gotta say it. You know what I'm saying? I grew up oh, watching. Yeah. Vick. True story. Um, gotta gotta say Vick. Grew up watching him. Uh, I remember the Chris Chandler era like a little a little bit. Favorite Falcons fans ever. Oh, you know who don't get talked about enough? To me, Algie Crumpler. Algie Crumpler. I knew he was going to say that. I knew he was going to say that. Algie Crumpler. <laughs> Algie Crumpler. Definitely don't get his flowers. Somebody give Algie no, bro. his flowers. He should be um, on this call, too. <laughs> Algie Crumpler, I would say. So obviously, the Falcons shaped who you are as sports fans. But being in the city of Atlanta, how has that kind of shaped you guys as artists? It's, it's definitely it's definitely kind of made us who we are. You guys think Atlanta is is a cultural hub of not just, you know what I'm saying, the South, not just America, literally of the world. There's a lot of things that have, that have started here at a, at, a, at a microcosm and just have, have grown into a bigger thing from, from Atlanta. So growing up in there, it does inspire you to always try like to to tweak art and to, and, to, and, to, and to break the rules and bend the rules and try to do different things because there's so much art going around you, so much culture going around you. It's like, well, what can I bring to it? So I think the more, more than anything, it's the originality that you get just from being in the city. When did you guys fall in love with music, man? Um, I, yeah, 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 from the jump, <laughs> from the jump, from the jump. Um, my, my people, my parents used to just play like all Motown records, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, from that, they from that era, so like <laughs> they would just play Motown records and I'm just like, yo, like, 
the musicality, the bass lines, the reverb, people singing the background vocals, the stories that's in them. I'm like, man, this is, I love this. And then, you know, I take, take the journey to keep modern day, you know what I'm saying? What's going on when we got like the Crunk era or, or, or Outkast, Ludacris, T.I., you know what I'm saying? When trap music came in or like, you know, just the R&B. And shout out to JD, man. I don't know why people no, are talking to JD. Jermaine I don't know why people are talking to Jermaine Dupree so crazy right now. I don't, I don't know why they're trying to. I don't know why they're trying to because he he has a, a vaunted career in the music industry, you know. He's a key piece. He's a All key the piece. acts that he's touched, really helping setting the stage for Atlanta and what it is today. You know, like that's that's just a for us just coming up, watching each one of those like acts that you mentioned, like become a thing and become iconic to people outside of us, it's such a confidence booster as a kid. Like you just really feel like, okay, no, people from where I'm from are significant to this world. And I should be significant to this world. You know what I'm saying? Like that 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 adds to like, to love of music and everything all overall. Thanks so much for your time, guys. For anyone who wants to catch the full conversation, head to fox5atlanta.com and we will be right back on Rise Up Tonight. Rise up. We got you covered with more Falcons news and nuggets, including a trip over to Harry's film room. Rise up tonight, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Rise Up Tonight for this week's edition of Harry's Film Room. Last week, this Falcons team showed a lot of fight and went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and has, had an opportunity to actually win the game. Now, an area that needs to be cleaned up going into this matchup versus the New York Giants is short yardage situations. Take a look at how big a difference it made in this game last week. Right here in this situation, we have the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter of this ball game, it's uh, Buccaneers 28, Falcons 25. This is a third and one situation. Third and one situation. So we're gonna let this film play and, and, and see what transpires. Now, what we have right here is penetration. We have white jersey, white jersey, white jersey, and this running back doesn't have anywhere to go because of all this penetration. In this crucial situation, this is a reason why the Falcons didn't get the victory on Sunday because on multiple third and one situations, and even on fourth and one situations, this is the kind of penetration that they had from the offensive line. You have white, 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 three white jerseys while you're trying to convert a third down to go win a football game. Now, this is a Super Bowl champion, uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't care who's across from you. It's time for you to stud it up and win this rep. Thanks, Harry. Well, after a few shanked punts at critical moments on Sunday, it seemed like not a matter of if, but when the Falcons would bring in another punter to foster some competition there. Falcons insider Tori has more on that in her keys to the game. Arthur Smith said it best on Wednesday. The Falcons have to get a win this weekend, their first win. How do they do that? We take a look at two specific areas in tonight's keys to the game. The Falcons have a decision to make about their punter before Sunday. After a poor performance from Cameron Nislick against Tampa last week, the Falcons have brought in Dustin Colquitt, a 16-year veteran and former pro bowler to compete for the job. Smith said he doesn't want to jerk the wheel on Nislick, but he wants there to be competition at the spot. But my second key to the game is the difference in running out the punter in the first place. Atlanta has to be better in short yardage situations. So third and short, fourth and one. Arthur Smith and Matt Ryan said this week the Falcons must get a better push up front in order to give the offense a better shot in these situations. Matt Ryan has said everything lies in improving the details. When it comes to these two specific areas, it's all in the details. For Rise Up Tonight, I'm Tori McElhaney. Thanks, Tori. Sounds like you and Harry are on the same page there with the short yardage situations. Well, thank you guys for staying up late with us here on Rise Up Tonight. For Harry Douglas, I'm Kelly Price. We'll see you back here next Friday night.